and welcome back to my channel. Alrighty, so if you read the description of this video, you know what I'm going to talk about. So we're going to get right into it. No hesitation. I'm hesitating. I know. I know. Just kidding. So today we're going to talk about IUDs and the fact that I just um, a few hours ago just got an IUD inserted and the IUD that I went with was Care guard. I'm going to start this off by saying that in no way, shape, or form am I a doctor, a trained professional, experienced professional, licensed professional, none of that. So anything I say, it's not with any kind of profession. I'm just purely speaking from my own experience um, and just giving you the, you know, the point of view that I have in regards to um, IUDs. And then another important thing to mention is that everybody's body is different. So what may be the experience of one person will most likely be a different experience for the other person. It all comes down to researching outside and researching yourself. So what I want to talk about is just a little bit about my personal experience um, leading up to the insertion. I'll go into detail about that, so just giving you a heads up. It's going to get real, um, not graphic because it's, it's the human body. So let's, let's enough with that, you know, censorship. It's going to be the human body. This You're not going to see nothing. I'm just going to talk about it um, in detail so that you understand and know the process as, you know, I experienced it from the research to just, you know, testimonials that I was reading and then, you know, just talking to my friends about their IUD experiences and everything that kind of led me to make my decision on, you know, to get an IUD first and foremost, as well as which one I wanted to get. And then from here, I'm going to be doing some monthly updates and check-ins just to let you know how it's, how everything is doing down there in the uh, uterus land. So I think it's very important to get this part out of the way just to break the ice. I have never been on birth control before and that's not to say it's a good thing, bad thing. It's just personally, I never really wanted to go on birth control just because I was very fearful of like side effects and you know, being on the pill. And with that, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you first and foremost do all the research you can to make sure that this is the right option for you. So first and foremost, what is an IUD? An IUD is an interuterine device or it could also be known as um, an IUC as an interuterine contraceptive. So essentially it is you know, inside and it karate chops sperm um, from entering, you know, and developing fingers and eyeballs. I love babies just as a, as a heads up. I'm just not ready for a baby at this point in my life. So it's a great alternative to the traditional birth control method. It's definitely really great if you are looking for something other than the pill um, and something that is longer lasting, one, that you don't have to think about, two, and three, from what I've researched and what I've been hearing, way more effective than the other contraceptive um, methods. So there are three hormonal IUDs and one non-hormonal from what I understand. Three are Mirena, Skyla, and then Lasagna. Sounds like lasagna, but it, it's just as effective. Just cannot pronounce it. So sorry, y'all. Sorry about that, y'all. And then the non-hormonal one is Paragard. I believe Skyla and the other one last for about three to four years, whereas um, Mirena can last up to seven years, but I believe five years is just the, you know, safety blanket. So whereas Paragard lasts for about 10 to 12 years, so essentially with the hormonal options, they are going to be releasing a low amount of progesterone. Progesterone is a type of hormone that blockades sperm from um, getting to the egg and you know fertilizing and everything. Um, so that is just a fancy way of saying, you know, it uses hormones to basically attack sperm. Now with the non-hormonal um, option Paragard, that essentially has the copper wiring along all of its edges um, and copper acts as a natural um, spermicide. Um, so it essentially kills sperm and blockades it from getting into your uterus. So when it came down to choosing between the hormonal and the non-hormonal, um, essentially what I had to do was research myself. That is the most important part of this entire process is to really understand your body and how it works because then we don't really pay attention to ourselves as much as we should. Um, the first thing I will say is pay attention to your period. That is huge. Um, with me, my period is typically five to seven days. It's pretty, I guess you would say like what they call regular or whatever, where in the first few days I experience a little bit of crampiness um, and then the last couple days are, you know, a pretty regular flow. And then the last, second to last day and the last day are super light and just spotting. 
and then in regards to the cramps my first few days are really crampy but honestly I just take three ibuprofens um, in the morning the first two days both both mornings and I'm good and it, I don't get cramps throughout my period so that's just my period everyone is different everyone has a different experience so with that I use that to decide um, on pair guard ultimately but actually for the longest time I was flip-flopping between the hormonal and non-hormonal um, essentially with the hormonal they say that if you have heavier, crampier periods, um, or you just prefer not to really have um, a period, or a light period for that matter, Mirena, Skyla, and the, the L1, um, those ones are great options. Now, for those who have light periods as well as um, the regular flow, Paragard is a really great, great option, but you can definitely still consider the hormonal options. What ultimately led me to decide on Paragard was the fact that I did not want hormones. Now with the hormonal ones, I was more so scared of just the side effects because again, I've never been on birth control and I wasn't sure how my body would react to that. So after kind of tossing and turning about it, um, I then decided to do some research online and weigh the pros and cons. So after the YouTube and internet exploration, I kind of turned to my friends to really get their advice. And everybody just gave me their personal experience, which was incredible. And everybody was super, super encouraging, super motivational, um, just girl power all the way. And it was, it made me feel a hundred times better. Um, and I spoke personally with a couple friends and they gave me some advice and everything. So that's definitely helpful to, to do some research in regards to you know reading some testimonials but also asking people that you know their personal experiences but at the end of the day you have to decide it is your body you have to understand your body and know that there are possible side effects but understand your body enough to know how you would deal with those there are side effects for the non-hormonal one just as there are side effects for the hormonal one so with Paragard the side effects are mainly that you may experience heavier flow as well as um, increased cramps. Now with the hormonal IUDs, the most apparent side effects is that you're going to experience a little to no period flow. Um, so just be aware of that. And then the also possible side effects include um, change in mood, possible acne, um, and weight gain possible too. So a few really great things you can do to repair um, are, first and foremost, is to take uh, between 600 to 800 milligrams of ibuprofen. The recommended amount is actually 800 milligrams, but it's up to you. About one and a half hour to two hours before your procedure. So if your procedure is at one o'clock, you would want to take it at 11 or 11.30, just because it helps with the pain and you know the cramp. Then the second thing is to wear comfy clothing. Wearing comfy clothing just makes you feel good. Whatever you would wear on your, you know, your bloaty days or your, you know, period days, just what you would wear at home. Come in pajamas for all I care. Just feel good, feel comfortable, feel relaxed. Eat something, especially before you take the ibuprofen. The number one thing people do when they are nervous is they don't eat um, because they, you know, feel like they can't get anything down. But you have to know that um, your body does need something to kind of sustain itself and to avoid fainting because when you you know you're lightheaded and you're hungry it's not a really good combination so um definitely want to put something into your system you have to just calm yourself and just take a little bit what i did this morning because i was i mean and in all honesty i was really nervous um i wasn't like shaking or anything but um i definitely tried to you know meditate and do things that kind of made me happy and just really not think about the procedure too much especially the night before don't think about it just think about anything else think about listen to music do something that just makes you feel good another really great thing i definitely recommend is bringing a friend or a family member or someone who can just support you so if you can bring someone who can just be there to like help you calm your nerves and things like that and then also drive you home but if you are going to be alone make sure you do get either an uber or you know carpool of some sort do not drive home um just because you could experience a lot of crampiness that might you know affect you know that so we don't want any any problems with that so definitely um definitely don't drive home have someone pick you up or take uber so my best friend shelby actually came with me and it made the experience so much better too she also brought me the super cute kind of like old timey hot water pad um that i could put on my belly if i felt any aches and pains as well as some epsom salt she's just an absolute perfect person and i love her for that so definitely uh she definitely thought ahead and whatnot um 
And afterwards we went straight to Taco Bell and we just, we picked out on some, some awesome tacos and stuff like that. So definitely treat yourself, be with someone that you love, be with someone that, you know, makes you feel good or do anything that makes you feel good. Um, because you deserve it. You got through this awesome experience. Um, though it may have been painful or nerve wracking, you got through it. You were a-okay. You were wonderful and you got it. So treat yourself. You deserve it. So now that that part is out of the way, I'm now going to talk to you about the procedure. The procedure at first, keyword at first, is probably the most scariest part. The reason is mainly because, you know, you hear about experiences from other people and how painful it is and how excruciating or scary and crazy it is um but it's important to know that if you decide to go down this route do not let anybody freak you out scare you and whatnot when i say understand your body understand you you have to get yourself into a positive mental space where you know that you will be okay and you are in good hands. Make sure you have a good trusted relationship with the medical professional who is going to be doing the insertion. Um, make sure you do your research and make sure you know you are ready. This is the part where I go into detail about everything. All right, so an important thing to note, the procedure for IUD insertion may be done differently by different doctors. Not everything described will be the exact way that all medical professionals perform the procedure. Ask your doctor for a more detailed and step-by-step -step guide prior to your procedure to understand exactly what will be done. So I go in, I sign in, and then I do the um, urine test where they just make sure that there aren't any fertilized eggs um, because that would defeat the purpose of getting the IUD. When that's all clear, they have you come back, you do your you know, weight and height and all of that. Now, when you're in the actual office right before, um, one of the nurses will talk to you about, you know, the procedure and everything they'll ask you you know is this something you want to do they'll give you some legal forms to sign off saying that yes you agree to the procedure being done so then they leave and they have you undress from the waist down now i'm going to tell you an important trick find something in the room to focus on because that will make the process a whole lot better because you're not thinking too much about the pain and about the process and looking you know down and seeing what they're doing and freaking out you just focus on one thing and then also practice your breathing. Breathe in, breathe out, and you will be okay. Um, if you are religious and you wanna say a little prayer, that's also great too. But whatever makes you feel comfortable, feels good, do that beforehand while you have that little time to yourself. And know at the end of the day, it will be okay. And so once they come in, they explain everything that they're gonna do before they do it, and they explain it as they do it as well. So you know what to expect, as well as um, what they're gonna be doing as they do it. And they'll tell you when it's gonna be a little bit uncomfortable. Nurse will come in and um, she actually had an assistant come in with her and she sat me down. We talked about life first and foremost, just to get the awkwardness and um, the scariness out of the way. She was actually the nurse that saw me the first time when I had visited prior to that. So it was really great to have her again. She was absolutely incredible. I love her. The first step that they do is actually just, you know, feel around and try to understand a little bit about your vagina. So they'll insert two fingers in and just kind of, you know, feel in there and what's going on, make sure everything's all good. The next thing that they're going to do is reinsert the fingers with some numbing cream. So they'll put that in as well. And then after that, is the speculum and as anybody who has ever had a pap smear that is the same tool that they use for the pap smear then you're going to feel a little bit of a pressure it doesn't hurt it just feels a little bit awkward because obviously there's something inside just know that this is them you know beginning the process um they'll just tell you to breathe deeply in and out and then again keep focusing on something and just you know positive thoughts so let me start off by saying that no tool that is used in this process is sharp or meant to cut you or you know create incisions or anything like that so you have to get that out of your mind completely that there's something going to cut you or, or hurt you in any way, shape or form. That everything is dull, everything is either, you know, cold or, you know, just awkward. So after they insert the speculum, they're going to measure your cervix. This is where you're going to feel a little bit of discomfort because you're going to feel a bit of a pinch. And by pinch, it's more so a cramp feeling. Um, they first are going to measure it about one or two times, probably twice. Um, so just know you're going to feel that pinch maybe um, one or two times. And it just feels a little bit like, ooh, like a kind of a bad cramp. So personally for me at that moment, it wasn't actually as bad as I thought it was going to be. I was expecting some kind of earthquake to happen, but instead it actually just felt like 
not really like a cramp it just kind of felt like a weird like boink it did kind of feel like a cramp but it didn't hurt as much as a cramp did just in my personal experience um i think it definitely helped to focus on you know obviously something else that was just calming to focus on and then just put yourself in a good positive way and then also breathe and another thing i will say is when you relax your cervix relaxes you're not um, tense you have to just really relax your muscles for the process to not hurt as much because once that pinch happens you know what to expect for the actual insertion part um, it will be a little bit crampy and it will kind of make your eye tear up a little bit but it's not to say that it's very painful it's just uncomfortable like I said everyone is different and everyone's cervix is you know different lengths and different things like that so um, it might be painful but it might also not be in my case it wasn't as painful it felt funky but it wasn't painful um, and then when they put the actual insertion device they obviously um, measured out to see how far down that they need to put place it so they take out the measuring thing and then they put the device in so my first thought with the device um, being inserted was that I thought it was in you know the T form I thought you know that going inside like this it's not gonna work so it's gonna be very painful and so I braced myself for you know it to be worse um, but I was pleasantly surprised when I saw the actual device the T is actually made out of a flexible material that is bent this way so instead of it being like a T it's actually bent more so like this um, and then they attach it to another device that um, basically is going to be inserted into you know your cervix and this is where you're gonna feel the second pinch and that is the final one so they're gonna put that in and they're always gonna get to the point where they need to be and then they'll release it the actual releasing part is not the pinch you feel the pinch part when they just place the device in but when they release the device there is no pinch as far as my um, experience goes i didn't feel it like you know unbuckling or things like that so after they insert the iud they take out the little loading device it has the little strings that obviously are connected to the iud and then they measure how much they need to cut the strings and then they cut it they usually let you feel the strings to see you know what you should be kind of like monitoring and looking out for um, and you understand what they feel like and look like and then after that they clean you up take the speculum out and we're done and the whole process from start to finish I would say the actual insertion part was five eight minutes the whole process 15 20 minutes I was in and out so all in all I had a really great experience the clinician I was working with was super sweet and her assistant was awesome I will say that my insertion experience was great um, I really had a great time I um, was very grateful and happy and I left there with a smile so I, now that everything is done the process of healing begins all right y'all so I'm going to show you my cramp kit uh, just a few things I got to prepare uh, first and foremost, you have your pads. I got the Always Maxi Pads. In general, any high absorbency, um, you know, super absorbent pads will do. Um, I'm normally, my normal period, um, it's pretty much the second one right here. That's the size that I normally use, but just for the fact that you, with the Paragard, you're going to have heavier flows, it's good to have backup. And I made sure to get the overnight protection as just my main everyday usage until my period kind of settles back into its regular self. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> and then obviously I went a little OD on the um, pain relief just because I wasn't really sure what to expect, but ready for anything at this point. This is all from the dollar store, y'all, so I didn't spend like an arm and a leg to get all this, so it was super cheap. Um, so these guys I got for everything I got for a dollar and whatnot. But of course you got your ibuprofen, um, usually 600 to 800 milligrams is what you want to take um, every 6 to 8 hours. You can take it up to 3 times, um, but make sure you space that out. Um, and then of course the mother of all pain relief, right here, y'all. And all my Africans, Nigerians, y'all know what I'm talking about when I say a bodaki is the truth. This right here, y'all, is magic in a jar. You honestly can just x on all this other bullcrap. But if you just get one of these, this will last you months on end. Um, this right here is just an African balm. Um, it might not even be African. I don't even know. But I know a lot of Africans use it. <laughs> so um, this right here is just like a hot rub kind of hot balm that you just you know would use and it does the job of all of these combined so that's how 
hot and soothing it is. It is incredible. Definitely something to use when you're um, right before you go to bed. Definitely something to be using um, just in case you don't have like an electric heat um, heat pad or whatnot. So this right here, this is the golden ticket. You can find this on online, Amazon or eBay. Online will cost about seven bucks, but in Nigeria, 50 cents. Sorry to tell you that. And of course, chocolate. And then another thing that I also forgot to mention that is also important, but just a helpful tip at the same time is that it really helps to be on your period when you are having the device inserted. The reason is because your um, cervix is dilated, so it allows for the measuring and all of that to be done a little bit more smoothly and quickly, I guess, just because it's already, you know, opened up a little bit to allow for an easier, you know, process so if you can schedule it around like if you know when your period is going to happen um and you can schedule it when you know you know your period is going to happen that's definitely helpful but if not it also works just as well um when you're not on your period um i think it definitely helped with the process of making it a little bit less painful um but it definitely may be contributed to um slightly less pain so if you can do that awesome if you can't still great um still definitely consider getting it so far it's been about five six hours and i feel pretty good i did experience a little bit of crampiness and it's kind of a sharp cramp here and there but i definitely think the ibuprofen really helped with you know numbing the pain and actually just to mention i actually did this at my local planned parenthood um so shout out to planned parenthood don't forget to donate they are bomb.com so that my friends overall is my experience um, from start to finish as well as the whole iud process from start to finish um, in a nutshell so i hope that was helpful um, definitely leave me some comments if you just want you know some thoughts advice um, you know need some advice on just putting yourself in a good state of mind and being at peace and everything gonna keep up with the vlogging and update you all and everything but if you have any questions or comments um, don't hesitate to reach out and email me or leave it in the comment section below um, i definitely want to hear what you all are thinking and i'm happy to share my experiences with you so thank you so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll hit you with another video see you soon